We are about to get ready to go through the embroidery design to put on these super cute little pumpkins onto the November Kimberbell Cuties Table Topper. This fabric line is by Moda and it is called Slow Stroll. I'll link to it below the video. And the construction of this topper is exactly like the topper that was done in March of this year in my video series. I'll link to it right above so you can see how to do that. It's four nine patches that are cut in half vertically and horizontally and then all twisted around. We are about ready to get started and go through creating SVG cut files from the embroidery designs out of the little pumpkins. And this pumpkin comes from the companion CD that went with the table topper book. All right, let's get to it. I need to create the applique for the pumpkins that are gonna go on the November Cuties Table Topper. This is from uh, Kimberbell Cuties Table Toppers, volume one. And I'm going to come down here to my yellow folder on my screen and I need to get to my Kimberbell folder and I'm gonna use the PES file format. I'm just gonna grab it. I'm on the Embrilliance Essentials home screen. And I'm gonna grab it and just drag it over and drop it. And it, that's the easy way to get a design into Embrilliance. And here we can see the design and the three main parts in Embrilliance that you wanna look at is of course the screen right here. And then over here on the side, on your right, you have objects. This is your objects panel. And you can click the plus sign and it will open up and show you all of the elements that make up the entire design. And then down here, we have the properties panel. If you cannot see objects or properties, come over here to the view menu in the top left and click it and go to toolbars and windows and make sure, I like to make sure all of these are checked. And that way, here's your object window, and there's your properties right there. So that's how you make sure you can see those. I need to do a couple of things here to get ready for this. I do not want to cut out four pumpkins by hand, so I'm going to use the scan and cut to do that. And I'm going to just go through each element of the pumpkin, see what it is, and those that are the placement lines. When you do an embroidery applique, the very first stitch that goes down for the applique is called a placement line or position line. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to use those placement lines. That's going to create the exact size I need for my applique. If you use the designs that are on the CD, the companion CD that went with the book, double check those and make sure they fit. Sometimes those you need to, in your scan and cut, you need to click the plus sign two times to make them just big enough. Otherwise, they seem to be a little skimpy short. So this very first line right here in the design is this placement line for you to line it up to put the pumpkin in the corner of the topper. I don't need that because the, the topper is already made and I do not need that placement line. So I'm just gonna hit delete on my keyboard and I'm gonna make it go away. All right, so most digitizers will use the same colors for like sky blue is placement and the mint green is tack down. So all of these that are sky blue you can pretty much bet those are gonna be your placement lines and we wanna turn those into applique. So to make it an SVG cut file, you come down here to the properties window and there's a color chip. Now you can right click on it and click applique position. But all that does is if I do that, see it says applique position up here now, but it doesn't create the SVG cut file. So we want the cut file, and in order to do that, you actually click on the chip itself with the left click, and then you get a thread dialog box pop up, and it's got color and applique. So we're gonna click on applique, and then over here in the inflate, I like to use 1.0 millimeters. The default is 1.5. I find that just to be a little bit big, so I changed it to 1.0 and now it stays like that throughout every design I open unless I change it again. So I'm gonna click on save 
because this is the cutting part of it right here. I'm going to click Save. And I am in my QD's Toppers folder where you can navigate to where it is you want to save it. And I'm just going to call it Pumpkin. You can tell I've already been doing this. Uh, dash. This is the left side right here. So this is Pumpkin dash left. And I'm going to click Save. It says, do you want to, it already exists. Do you want to replace it? I'm going to tell it, yeah, sure. Otherwise, I would just click Save and it would pop in there just no problem. I'm going to click OK and click OK. And that's it. So then this is the tack down for that. Here is Pumpkin Bright. Come down to the color chip, click on it, applique, turn it into applique position, and click Save. And I'll scroll down here. I can, you can see I've already done it. I called it pumpkin dash right and save. Yes. Okay. And okay. And I went down and did the same thing. This one right here. This is pumpkin center. And I called this one pumpkin center. I'm just going to cancel because I've been doing this already. And then I, on this one right here, I changed it to pumpkin stem. Okay, so I've got all of my SVG files in the folder where I need them. And so now I'm going to jump over to the Brother Canvas on my browser. And you go to canvasworkspace.brother.com. And you don't have to have a Brother embroidery machine in order to use this. This works with any home embroidery machine because all we're doing is using this platform here to create cut files. And you can download them to your scan and cut from here. And you can use your scan and cut with any home embroidery machine. You don't have to have a brother machine. It works with all home embroidery machines. So I'm just going to click new right here to get a new mat and have that pop up. And across the top here, we've got a button, this fourth one over, this fourth little icon says SVG. I'm going to click it and it says select a file. So I'm going to click choose file. Let's go pumpkin center, pull that up and click open. And we're going to click OK. So I need four of these. I'm going to pull this down here. And because all of your pieces will load up here in this upper corner. So I'm going to right click, duplicate, right click, duplicate, right click, duplicate. So there's my four centers. So I am going to cut a piece of fabric that is approximately six by 12. If I can and get these, let's see, maybe I'll stand them up and they'll fit better. All right. So there's my pumpkin centers and I'm going to come up here to SVG again and click it and choose file. And let's do our stems. I will do pumpkin stem, click open and OK. Right click, duplicate, right click, duplicate, right click, duplicate. Now, if you want to know how much fabric you're going to need, you can highlight them all like I just did by clicking your pointer up here and just dragging it over all of them. And then right click and go group. And you can see down here at the bottom, I like to have an extra inch all the way around. So I would cut like a three and a half, oh, by four. That will give me plenty of fabric to cut all of these stems out. Now, you definitely want to ungroup before you download the project to the Scan and Cut because you cannot ungroup at the mat. And if you need to move anything around, you won't be able to. So I'm going to right click and ungroup. And then this one, we can see that one is um, almost four and three quarters. You need four and three quarters square. But I'm going to group all of these, right click and group. Oop. And now I can see I'm going to use a piece that is like five and three quarters. We'll go by 12. And that way everything will fit and I'll be able to cut everything out. So five and a half, five and three quarters by 12. Okay. Right click and ungroup. 
and we're ready to send it down to the scan and cut. So I'm just going to click download and scan and cut transfer. And it's all ready. So I'll link right up here so you can see how to connect your scan and cut to your home network and then how to connect it into the Brother Canvas if you need that help. All right, so now it's time to go cut out our pieces. Okay, I've got my fabric on for my pumpkin centers. I've got little threads on it and my stems. On the scan and cut, when you first turn it on, you've got two menu items right there. You have pattern and scan and pattern are pat that those patterns are patterns that were in the machine when you bought it. So I need to get the design down from the brother canvas that I downloaded. So I'm going to touch this button right here at the bottom that says retrieve data. And you've got four choices where you can get it from, where you can get the data from. Let me zoom in for you. You can get it from inside the machine. If I had saved it to the machine, I might have done that. You could get it from the cloud, from a USB, or you might be cabled to your computer. I'm going to get it from the cloud. And there they are right there. Now what I need to do is scan the mat and take a picture of the fabric so I can see where these pieces are going to exactly fit. So let me go ahead and this blue button right here that has a bar across it. That's the scan button. And I'm just going to press start. I've got heat and bond light on the back of the fabric. I'm using the low tack mat. And so you can put the fabric pretty side up if you're using the low tack mat. If you're using the standard tack mat, which has a purple bar on it right here instead of that turquoise, then you would want to put your fabric pretty side down and be sure to mirror your pieces. All right, let's zoom into the screen. Nailed it. Look at that. Everything is sitting exactly where I need it to. So I'm going to tell it OK. And it says, please select. And I'm going to press cut. And we'll be done in less than a minute. Start. Awesome. All done. Let's see how we did. caught that one little thread like it always does which is fine no big deal and it's always in the same spot too it's like right where it starts and where it finishes it just doesn't cut that one thread now it does do it if you have an SVG um, cut you know if you are like a purchased not a stitch file if you're cutting something that did not originate as a stitch file it's just the strangest thing okay there's my stems, three and four. Awesome. Boy, I'm glad I don't have to cut those out by hand. Okay, I'm going to do the exact same thing now with my other fabric for the other two pumpkin parts that go on each side. All right. Okay, I have all of my pieces cut out and I just need to get my topper hooped. So I'm just going to hoop this just like this using the magnetic hoop for the 10 needle. There's the template and this is exactly how this is going to go just like that. So it's not going to have anything right here. It, that'll be fine. Not a big deal. So I'm just going to put this on there. That'll hold it. I don't think we're going to need any anything else to do this. That looks real good. So I sent the design over wirelessly and I'm getting ready to pull it up and get started. Okay, over here at the machine, I changed out the first three spools with the colors that I need. So I'm gonna touch that and I'm gonna go back to home and tell it okay. So I don't get all wrapped up into palettes of colors or anything like that. I just put spools on the machine of the colors that I want that match my fabrics and then I just use those spools and identify those spools in the machine. So I need to change up my thread colors. I'm going to unthread needle number one and I'm going to pull it through. I just tie everything together a simple knot in the back and a real easy way to do that is to 
on your old spool, leave a, a, you know, like a 12 inch tail hanging down and that makes it easier to tie them off. So it's just a simple way of doing it. So I'm going to um, touch my needle threader button in spool number one, needle number one. Okay, and now to move the head, let me zoom in for you. There's a button down here with two needles and a hoop with arrows on either side of it. You wanna to touch that. And here are the, these correspond with all 10 needles. So I'm gonna to go to number two. Now I need to pull number two. Number two is the outer edges of the pumpkin. Just pull that through. Needle threader button. Now I need to get the design into the machine. So I sent it over wirelessly. So across this screen here, you've got designs that are internal to the machine, frames, uh, motifs, you've got monograms, lettering, uh, all different kinds of stuff in here. These buttons down here are memory that's internal to the machine. This is USB memory. This uses a mouse and this you could cable to your computer or you can get it wirelessly. And then on the Brother PR1055, you also have my design center, which is exactly like the design center that is in the Brother Luminaire. It's a little bit more limited, but for the most part, it does pretty much the same thing. So I'm gonna to touch my wireless button and there's my pumpkin right there. Touch it. And as soon as the blue set, as soon as that highlights blue, you can just touch it. And that tells the machine that's the design that you want to use. Now on this particular screen, you can resize it, you can rotate, you can do all kinds of stuff. Don't mess with the size if you've already pre-cut your pieces because that'll mess everything up. So I'm just gonna tell it edit end right now. And now I wanna go into rotate and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. So it looks just like the pumpkin that I have. And I'm gonna go into these three spools right here. This is where I'm gonna assign the colors. You get a preview of what it looks like right here in this little box. So these numbers right here correspond to the stitches in the design and there's one of 10 and you can see that there's 10 stitches in the design right here. And then these numbers correspond to the needles. And then you have a stop and a do not stitch and okay. So this very first one we can see that's an outside piece of the pumpkin that's that darker orange is on spool number two. And the way this machine thinks, you would think you would tell it it would stitch and then stop, but that's not what it does. It does stop and then stitch. So this first one is a placement line. I want that to be uh, spool number two. The second one, the second stitch is also gonna be spool number two. That's a tack down line. But before it tacks it down, I want it to stop. So I'm gonna put my hand up. I get a little hand right there. Tell it to not to stitch. Okay, so I've told it, put the hand up, don't stitch this yet because I need to remove the hoop and iron on the applique fabric. And then the next one is the outside on the other side of the pumpkin. That's also number two, color number two. And the fourth stitch, it can get confusing. So it helps to look over here at these numbers to see where you are. That's the tack down. Before it stitches that, I want it to stop, and then I want it to use spool number two. And then this is the center. That is spool number one. And there's the tack down for, for the center, and before it stitches, I want it to stop, and then I'm gonna tell it number one. Use spool number one. Here is the placement line for the stem. That's gonna be spool number three. Let me scroll down here. There's the tack down for spool number three for the stem before it stitches it. I want it to stop and then I want it to use spool number three. This is the full outside of the satin stitching. That's going to be spool number two. And the satin stitching for the stem 
is going to be spool number three. And that's it. And it's really nice once you get to your satin stitching, you don't have to tell it to stop anymore. Okay, I'm going to tell it okay. Now, if you save it in memory, that's fine. It will remember the stops, but it won't remember what spools you put on it. So you'll kind of have to just keep that in mind if you have to stop and come back the next day or something. Double check and make sure your spool numbers are correct. All right, so let's back out a little bit here. I've got my crosshair on here. I am going to touch the camera on the screen. There's a camera there. I'm going to touch it and it's going to scan the frame. Tell it okay. Needle threader error. Are you all right now? Okay, I can see that I have some rotation I need to do. I'm going to hit the rotate button and I'm going to rotate it 10 degrees until I get it where I want it. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to move it up. That's pretty good. I'm looking to make sure I've got equal distance between the design, the, these bottom corners of the design, and the edge of the fabric. And that looks pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna take the paper pattern off. I'm gonna tell it okay. And I'm gonna touch embroidery. And we're gonna hit lock and go. Until it lock and go and it's gonna stitch the tack down and it's perfect now you iron it down so you don't necessarily have to do the tack down but I like to do that just in case I need to do any micro trimming but that 1.0 millimeter inflate is perfect Okay, so that's it. We have another 10 minutes worth of final satin stitching and I'll see you back here in a bit. All finished embroidering. Oh, that turned out just beautiful. Look how pretty that is. Didn't that turn out nice? So you can see, now I've got three more of these to do, how nice it is to have these pieces pre-cut. And there's the back. Don't care that it, you know, that it looks like that. It'll be on the table. Nobody will see it. But yeah, that just turned out absolutely beautiful. And I was working on the long arm while this was doing its thing. So there's a, uh, a time efficiency piece to this too. So I will finish up the other three and see you back here in a bit.